This is going to be a rather off-the-cuff reaction to Spy Family Part 2's first episode, which aired today. This won't be nearly as in-depth as some of my other content, but I had some thoughts about the episode that I wanted to get off my chest now that it has officially arrived. There may be small spoilers about the episode in this video, so I do recommend that you please stop watching if you do not want to have any details about Spy Family Part 2 ruined for you. With that said, let's go. Spy Family was, needless to say, the most anticipated anime of the spring 2022 season, and it was likewise one that I found myself getting invested in. While I was not as rhapsodic about the series as I hoped I would be, I still liked it enough to give it a strong recommendation. With the second part now here, it seemed like Studios Wit and Cloverworks wanted to strike the iron while it was hot and keep the popular momentum the series had generated only a few months prior going even more. The OP is something of a mixed bag for me, but ultimately I lean towards positive. I confess the song doesn't have the same kind of resonance for me that the OP did for the first season. Even though I honestly don't remember that OP song too much, I remember how the freedom it gave itself with its jazzy syncopation and instrumentation gave it a kind of freneticism that I found infectious. The second OP's song doesn't quite have the same kind of immediacy that I was expecting, since it goes for a generally different affect altogether. It feels more rhythmically square, but it has grown on me after multiple listens. That being said, I genuinely love the idea that the animation plays up the pleasantness and warmer quality of the story, even if it does sometimes go a little bit overboard with the lighting effects and has that one sequence of Anya running in a dark space with not much in it. The main thing that I remember when I think of the first OP is the color not only of its aesthetic and freely changing styles, but also that the action itself was rather colorful. That quality of colorfulness is alive and well here, just with a lot less action. In that sense, between the two OPs visually, we have more or less a pretty thorough overview of both halves of the story tonally. As far as the episode itself is concerned, it largely picks up right from where part one left off, and once again establishes its playful clash between the serious with the absurd. In an effort to keep Anya's motivation up to continue her good work, Lloyd agrees to give her a dog. But needless to say, the dogs are a bit... Well, not what one would normally expect at a pet store. But then again, what do you expect when your pet store is run by the military? The idea of buying super muscular dogs that act more like bodybuilders as opposed to real dogs is honestly funny, as is Anya's complete revulsion at the idea. But it doesn't take long for Operation Strix to bring itself into the focus as well, as dogs seem to be the main focus of the day, as the serious backdrop involves the exclusionists relying on dogs with explosives to achieve their goal. Spy Family Part 2's first episode uses its unifying element of dogs to highlight both the darker underpinnings surrounding Operation Strix and the adorable comedy that marries the two together. The absurd juxtaposition between cute and serious is the meat of what makes the show work, as it manages to be over the top in both respects. I mean... Even though we're talking about the seriousness of relations between East and West running the risk of falling apart, we're talking about dogs with explosives. The entire point is not to take it too seriously, even though it's treated in-universe very seriously. The closest approximation would be to relate it to something like Get Smart, where hijinks are embedded into the tone and body of the text, despite the supposed calamity that possibly hangs over the characters' heads. The entire notion that Operation Strix is really not the focus of the series and where the heart lies is emphasized in this kind of juxtaposition. The emphasis is more on the absurdity of the whole. The episode also gives Anya some things to do as well. One particular aspect of the series that I didn't see talked about that much in Part 1 was Anya's craftiness as a character. While it's true that she does not necessarily have the smartest brain when it comes to academia or social manners or graces, she does display on occasion a sense of reading the room. While she can detect problems or conclusions that might pass others by, it's also true that she's young and privy to a lot of the short-sighted decisions that cause her to get into trouble. It also helps that Yor is, well, frankly, not the most attentive mother in the world. Aesthetically, there wasn't really anything here in the episode as a whole that blew me away in the strictest sense, but frankly, the familiarity of being back in the saddle with it was more than enough. I smiled a lot, and that, I think, is the main takeaway. It was fun. Spy Family Part 2's first episode was, for all intents and purposes, a pretty good way to dive back into the series and get reacclimated to what made the first series fun. Carrying both the serious and the comedic close by, and even though it did not dazzle, it was a good ride. If I had any apprehensions that the series would remain a one-season pony and my interest would taper off, it was snuffed out here. 
going purely by the first episode alone, even if I don't end up considering it one of my anime of the year, I imagine it'll still be a nice time. This has been Zenote of Zenote Taku. Happy viewing, everyone!